196. Let's get to Garfield the movie, which came out in 2004, and I'm going to be doing this one, the sequel, and then the new Garfield movie, as well as a few bonus reviews, which you can get in full either at filmbuds.bandcamp.com or subscribe through Apple Podcasts and get all premium episodes for five bucks a month. So Garfield the movie is directed by Peter Hewitt, who also directed the second Bill and Ted movie. It stars Bill Murray as Garfield, or The Voice, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Brecken Meyer, Stephen Tavolosky, Evan Arnold, and a few others. And the synopsis is, John R. Buckle buys a second pet, a dog named Odie. However, Odie is then abducted and is up to John's cat, Garfield, to find and rescue the canine. So I decided to just go ahead and do this since the new film was out and I knew I was going to watch it at some point. So I figured, hey, why not go back and revisit the whole franchise as it were? I've never been a big Garfield fan, but why not just go back and check it out, see if it still holds up? And I watched all three of these movies in a night, pretty much. I think I'd seen this one when it first came out when I was really young, but remembered nothing about it so basically was a first time watch and i think and we'll get to it with the new film for sure but what i don't understand and i can appreciate this one more so than the new one because it is the first one and i don't fault people for saying hey let's just try and get garfield into a movie and try and get a whole series going i can see you know the logic in that i don't think that's anything crazy but at this day and age where None of them really did all that well, financially or critically. That's really only gotten progressively worse. What baffles me now is this new film, where after 20 years of inactivity, that, hey, you know what would do really well at the box office? It would be a huge hit? Garfield. You know, that's going to blow the doors off. And I'm just like, who... Who is having these ideas? Like, what producers are greenlighting this, you know, $80, $100 million movie for Garfield? I'm just like, never in my life, never in my 30 years of life have I ever heard someone mention how much they love Garfield, like the cartoons, the comics, anything like that. I've never heard someone mention that. Nor the movies, these movies. Like, Garfield is something that just seems to be in the pop culture zeitgeist but it's never actually really that loved by at least newer audiences i would think but this one it is just trying to get things going it's giving him a very decent lazy fairly narrativeless movie and it's something that most people could enjoy like it's pretty accessible and watching this one now I don't think it's all that good. I think at the time I probably would have liked it more if I was just of age and I could understand it more. But now the overall style feels pretty dated. I think Bill Murray, though, fantastic as Garfield. Like that is perfect casting, whereas we'll get to it with Chris Pratt where I feel differently. But Bill Murray, to the little knowledge I have of Garfield, perfectly encapsulates the character. And that's partially the writing as well. But I think he is so good in that role and really is underused even so and he really gives way more than he needs to for a movie like this and i don't mind that the movie is very much a pretty much a hangout kind of film and it's largely just about this rescue of this dog that the human owner adopts but i think with all of these films considering it has come from a cartoon like just a comic strip After about 20 minutes in this, as much as I wanted to love it, like I don't have anything against this kind of movie, as much as I wanted to love it, by the end or so of the first act, I was just bored, pretty much. And there were a few moments here and there that kind of kept my interest, and Bill Murray would keep me laughing here and there, but it really runs out of steam so quick. And I'm like, I don't mind that original setup where. Garfield is in paradise, you know, being pampered, and he's also just lazy. Couch potato loves food. I can get into that for sure. But then this dog comes into the picture, and he's basically just trying to maintain the best friendship with his owner, Garfield, that is. And that's the large overarching theme 
or emotional line of the movie, which is fine. And that part I like, but when it really just is entirely focused on this very shallow rescue, like there's really not much else going on. There's no real ideas happening. The humor, once it gets into the meat of the movie, it really falls off. So it really becomes so dry and aimless where even though it's only, I think like an hour and 20 minutes, it felt so long. And all these movies, they feel so long for some reason. I don't know why that is exactly because I want to love a Garfield movie. I would think there's a great movie out there for someone to do. I just don't think it's happened yet. But I don't know why the pacing of these movies, whether it's a lot of story or too little story, they just feel like a slog. But also one thing I love personally for anyone who listens to the show a lot, I love movies about talking animals. I know that's weird, but anything from like Lion King, Zootopia, anything like that, I love. I don't know why, I just do. So this movie is inherently in my wheelhouse to enjoy. But talking about some specific scenes that are okay, I think the relationship with Garfield and the Doberman Pinscher, I think it is, where the Doberman Pinscher really wants to get off his leash and chase after Garfield, and Garfield is just taunting him all over the place. and then. Him having this very immature, petty battle with the dog before the dog escapes. All that's good. And I do like the lead actor. I saw him first, I think, in Rat Race. I think he's a very good comedic actor. The show, like the pet show, dog show, whatever it is, sequence where Odie does insane tricks and blows everybody away. I think that's pretty clever. One thing, though, actually, that I'm so glad is not really a thing anymore, it's Occasionally they do this, but not so much. I'm really, really happy that they moved away from the seemingly live action or real animals, but you just animate their mouths moving when they speak, as opposed to just animating an animal like they did with Garfield. I'm so glad that that's like CG has developed enough to where we don't do that. I just hate that. It looks so bad. It looks so goofy and takes me out of it. Like I'd rather it be a quote unquote live action Lion King movie and just watch the animals speaking because they're actually animated than us seeing a real dog and them just changing their mouth movements. I think that's just terrible and it looks bad. I don't mind the look of Garfield though. I think for an early 2000s movie, the animation is really not that bad. I think it only looks a little iffy when he's out in too much sunlight and you can see the edges of the the digital haze and all that, I think it looks a little eh. And the shadows and lighting are a little bland, but for the most part, he still looks like a part of that world in most cases, I mean, to a certain extent. So I didn't really have a problem with that. I was expecting it to look terrible, but I thought it looked okay. The scene in the pound I enjoy where the girl comes in and tries to pick a cat, I think that's pretty funny. So. I definitely did not hate the movie. I was kind of bored in large stretches, but it's still fairly harmless. There's nothing, I don't think, offensively wrong with it. It just does feel too much like early 2000s attempting at reinventing a style, which I can appreciate. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And we definitely have moved on and developed much more over the years. But if you want to see something a little bit different, if you like Bill Murray, it's on Disney Plus for anyone who does have interest. So that one is a light two and a half out of five. <laughs>